Hello everyone. I hope you're doing very, very well. Uh, welcome to week four. In this week, we'll have a look at controllers and authentication. Um, and uh, this week, uh, we'll dive into controllers as mentioned. So let's get straight into that. Um, a quick recap before we move on to doing things. Uh, so, you know, uh, just coming back from the last week, last week we built the model, but we need to see some action, right? So the action is basically going to be facilitated by the controllers. And uh, what exactly is the controller? Let's have a recap. So controller is like the brain of the application. It facilitates the interaction between the model and the view. It processes a request and returns a specific, I mean, a response in a specific format. So I mean, I'm saying, you know, let's head to Google or something. Uh, you're typing. Okay, no, that's not nice. Let's do um, any anything for that matter, any website for that matter. If you just uh, go for that. So if I just go, I just um, about us. So right now, I just typed the URL. And this particular URL is mapped to a certain action in our application, uh, which in our case would have been called about us. So that controller, uh, uh, there is a specific controller in which there is a specific action called about us, which which has the uh, code for executing or what should happen when a user goes to this URL. So that's like the very oversimplified overview of uh, you know what happens in that. So like in week one, when we had a look at the request response cycle, when we were looking at the basics. So right now we're talking about this part of the request response cycle, the controller and the router. So when you make a request as, as, as we did to about us, it goes to Rails router. Rails router finds if there is a route uh, which maps to about us. You know, if I just type about us one, this route doesn't exist. So it says page is not found. So that means this route is not registered in our application. So that's the job of the router. Um, then it goes to the controller. That controller checks if there is uh, an action named about us. And if there is, there's some piece of code which executes and does the required uh, job. So then if, if there is some data that has to be loaded that will go to the model and load that data from the database again come back to the controller and if there is some page that has to be rendered so in this case uh, the about us page had to be rendered that was rendered as the view and uh, if there is some interaction on the view it will go back to the controller and that's how it's it, the entire uh, process completes so uh, I think uh, we can now move to the next part. So I've explained three, four main things. One is the URL that we talk about, then the controller, and then the views, which is basically what you see at the end. So it seems a lot of steps, right? You need to make the controller, the route, the view, the model, too many things involved. But we're learning Rails, right? And Rails oversimplifies this process. So let's have a look at something called a scaffolding. Now, what exactly is scaffolding is that it creates a lot of boilerplate code for you so that you don't have to write everything again and again. So for instance, the basic, like last time you were building the activity tracker and let's take an example of a to-do list. What essentially you do with a to-do list, the four main actions are creating an uh, a task, editing the task, updating the task, which is like, that's basically the same thing. Reading the task, that is just having a look at what the task is and obviously being able to delete the task. So these are four main operations and they're very common in every application you find. So uh, we are sort of repetitively writing those four actions again and again. So Rails simplifies that process for us and just tells that, hey, if you're repeating this process again and again, why not just execute all this through one line so let's actually it's it's called rails magic because a lot of just things just happen on their own and enough of talking i think we can just 
uh, you know execute uh, what we have so last time if you recall if you so um, i'm on my code spaces and i've pulled the latest main so you know you can just do git pull origin main and you'll have the updated repository so if you have a look at v3 slash activity tracker slash app slash uh models it my bad uh if you have a look at let's have a look at the schema file if i just go to schema.org Uh, oops, that is the week four schema on RV. That is why that's wrong. Um, let me just go back. But what exactly was the thing? Was uh, actually just go back to GitHub and show you that. Uh, if you go to activity tracker, oh, wait, I, I got why that's happening because. It had to be executed by you all, but okay. Uh, at the end, this this was like the migration file, and we had created a table which had one string type title, a string type type, a date time type start column, a duration column of type decimal, and a calories column of type integer, and automatic addition of timestamps. Now this is only the model. We want to see some action happening on our page. There's nothing much happening right now. So what I'll just do is close all this. There's something called a scaffold in Ring. I'll just zoom in a bit so that you can clearly see what's happening. So if I write Rails by this terminal, one second. Yes, that looks good. Rails generate. So last time we generated a model, the same sort of script which is uh, coming from generate. So we write Rails generate scaffold so scaffold basically means like building the what exactly does the word scaffold in general english means is that uh, it, it's about uh, building like a sort of a basic architecture so in this case you'll say rails generate scaffold then the name of the model so now you could stop over here and Rails would directly understand that. So if you would execute this command in inside week three, or oh, sorry, before we do this, let's head to week four and then go to activity tracker. Uh, I think I just something wrong. It's called I can put it's called activity tracker. Now, if we do let's first test if the server is running. Yes, that works fine. Uh, so now what we can do is if we have the console, say rails generate scaffold and the name of the model. So if you were to execute this command inside week three, it will automatically understand there is a model already existing by the name of activity and it will create all the other files. Uh, for it so let me actually execute this but this time we'll also specify uh because week four is like a new uh let's it, it's a new application because we want to teach you from the beginning we don't want to like like it should make sense uh as a transition so uh we can do rails generate scaffold and then specify all the attributes that we need so just going by what we had done last time. Activity type string, then it was start, date time, duration, document, and category in future. So if I now execute this, it creates a lot of files. And if you have this uh, overwrite thing, press on yes because we have written a special test and not the basic test which comes uh, as a boilerplate code so if you see a lot of uh, new files have been generated and i'll quickly go over uh, these files and uh, as always uh, the capitalization etc is very important in rails so the first letter of the model is capitalized and then these are all snake case 
you know all of this is again followed here so the first file that rails creates is this uh, migration file that we also had a look last time uh, because this using the scaffold we are creating everything not just the model we are creating the model the views the controllers the tests all of this is created so that's why this create activities migration file i'll not go into detail uh, because we have covered that last week then comes the uh, second yes so we created the model this was also done last time then some tests we will not go into the deep of why these then there is something called as uh, resources activities so what we can do is if you go to app slash Uh, wait a minute. Um, yes, if you go to routes.rb, uh, this basically defines all the routes that we have in our application. I'll come in detail about what's happening here later on, but for now, let's move on to another. Let's check what was being created next. So, if we go back to our list. And it says invoke the scaffold controller, which creates something known as the activities controller. So if I just close all this, I go to activity tracker, I go inside app, I'll see something called as controllers. And there is this thing called the activities controller. Now, this is where all of this code was automatically created by Rails. We have not written anything on this, but this is where all the magic happens. I'll uh, cover every every line by line what's happening here. Uh, slightly later on in the video um but for now i'll show you some action that is or what output we have received then it says invoke erb now uh, we'll cover this in the next week so all of these are view files uh what the the user should see and the rest is some tests and uh, other files so what what we can do now is uh let's see what has happened now so the first thing we have to do is raise db migrate and also create the database if you haven't already. So you could do raise db create first. And then you can say raise db migrate. This will now apply the migrations similar to what had happened last exactly same as what had happened last week. And the next command is let me clear out the console so that's the command is not too bad for now. Now we can just run the server. So you could say Rails server, you can just say Rails S. So it says go to port 3000. I'm just going to control click this. Let us see. You'll If you're on code spaces, then you have this sort of. Uh, so meanwhile, this is loading. Um, all right, so you now see the race application, but you'd say, hey, nothing new, right? This is already there. But the magic now is if I go to slash activity, so you will not see this URL if you're on your, if you have a local setup, you will have local host 3000. So well, that's okay. Uh, a basic thing is to understand that we have to go to whatever is present slash activities. So if I now head over to activities, something has come up, right? Um, it also tells us a button called new activity. So if I click on new activity, all of this magic is already there. So now you can uh, magically create a new activity. So let's give this like a title. Let's call it like Sunday cycling, uh, activity type cycling. And start date, let's keep it today and whatever the time is. The, the, the duration will be 30 and the calories will be 300. And if I click on create activity, uh, magic, this activity was successfully created and it shows us whatever we had entered. So I just go to back to activities. So it's now on slash activities and all the activities that we have are will be listed here so if i just create one more activity quickly and i just call it monday site uh, let's, i don't know let's call it um uh, incident dance and activity dance thing start is uh let's say 29 and the duration was 60 minutes calories for 500 let's create activity now again, go to back to activities. So now you see there are two activities. The styling is obviously very, very ugly, but 
uh, that's that's what we'll cover next week uh, so if you now see on slash activities you'll see all the activities that you have if you click on show this activity you are redirected to slash activity slash one at slash one is the id of this particular record and that's why you see this you can also edit this activity so if i just name it sunday cycling Day and update it it now shows sunday cycling edited and if i go to back to activities here also it's uh, updated uh, another thing that you can do is go to this particular activity and destroy it it's like basically delete this activity it says activity was successfully destroyed and now if i if it's read it's automatically redirecting me to slash activities and here only one activity remains all right awesome so a lot of magic has uh, happened and you can now see a nice application let's try to understand how all this happens so you can now see there is a lot of logs on the this is called logs you can see it 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 you know has the information of what's happening i'll cover that as well shortly um so now let's look at the controller which i was talking about so let's 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 do one thing and go line by line on what's happening so the first line says class activities controller which is inheriting from the application controller um this is just saying that the application controller is like the base of our uh, application that's like the the boss controller is like the main controller and everything just inherits from this controller um so activities controller inherits from the application controller uh, there is something called as before action i'll come to that uh, slightly later let's first look at index so nicely the code is also commented automatically so this says that it's a get request if you remember we have four main uh attributes that is get post put and patch and delete so these like the four main http verbs so this says that it's a get request to slash activities so this is what we were saying over here it says it's a get request slash activities and the name of the method is index so it says the name so this is like a ruby method uh, it starts with def ends with end and the name of the method is index so uh, that basically says it's the index function and as the name suggests this is what you see when you go to the slash activities page it displays a list of all the available uh, items in this case the activities so it provides like an index of the data that's why it's named index so like as you have a index of a book and you can you know click on each of the items and go to that this is exactly that's why it's called index and the next line that you see inside the function body is called is looks like at the rate activity is equals to activity dot all now what this uh this this is familiar to you i think last week we had the model session and this says that the activity model fetch all the records i think very clear that here the models are being used and we're saying from the activity model fetch all the records and store them in a variable called activities now one thing you would notice which is new to you is it has this add symbol before activity now what these special variables are called are called instance variables they are called instance variables so the difference between a normal variable so even if i wrote activity is equal to activity dot it gives this nice auto complete to you the only difference between these two variables is that this all the variables that start with add will be available on both the controller as well as the view so if we just have a quick look not very detailed but if we just go to views and activities and go to index.html so all of this was also created by rails automatically and if you see here is what we see so it says it has an h1 tag of activities and this is what we see over here and it says add the rate activities so the exact same name of the variable that we defined in the controller is now acting over here so if i just if i were to change it to like my underscore activities and i'll just comment this out if i not do anything and if i were to refresh now this should now give me an error because the view does not know so it says undefined method each for new class it says activity will not define so i cannot process it but if i now make it uh, my underscore activity 
and refresh this it will work exactly same as before so these are called instance variables and you can use them in both the controller as well as the view um, uh, another thing that we have to notice over here is that um, race does not have like a specific format but like my what i'm trying to say is the next question you would have in your mind is how does rails know which view file to render right there are so many view files over here but how does this method know that it needs to go to index.html.erb so here also rails follows the convention over configuration a setup in which uh, uh, if you do not tell rails what exactly like you don't have to tell rails which file to render it will look for a view file with the exact same name as the method. So if I were to change the name of this method to index one, it will look for a file named index one.html.erb or index one.ht. So that's again some Rails method. Um, the next one is depth show. So as this one says, it's another get request which goes to slash activity slash one. So if you click on show this activity, it goes to slash activity slash one. Uh, one is just indicating that it's the ID of the uh, activity it does not have to be one only. Any ID that will be here, that is processed in the show class. Now you would ask, there's nothing inside this function, but how is it working? So that's where Rails magic comes in. And it automatically knows that what needs to happen when it goes to that show end. The next thing is another get request, but there, there is one thing which is acting here, which I'll come to, maybe I can cover that now itself. So if we just scroll fully down, there are some private methods over here. Uh, the first one is set activity. So um, as this says, use callbacks to share common setup. So what this set activity method does is, it defines what an activity is again an instance variable by the name activity and it uses this rails model method called find which we had looked last time to find a record whose id is parameters id so parameters are basically what are passed inside the request so if i can look for this if you see the logs uh, it says started get slash activities at this, this time now it's processing by activities controller has show. So it basically says that when you go to the uh, URL slash activities slash one, it is processing by the activities controller, which is what we are at right now. And it goes to the show method, right? And the parameters in this case are ID one. It's a hash map whose first uh, key is ID and the value is one. So when we are loading it, this says activity of find parameters of ID. This is already available to Rails. And it just says, find me the activity whose parameter is of the ID, like basically this ID, which in our case was one. And that sets it over here. So whenever you have methods that have a specific ID, so uh, uh, for instance, like editing a specific activity or deleting a specific activity in this case this method will automatically call so there is there are these methods which i, I was telling you about the first line it says before action um we can probably deal with before action slightly later on in the week but what this is saying that before uh something executes before action set activity that is called this method called set activity for only these uh, method so it will act only if the show method is reached or only if the edit one is called or only update or only destroy right because you want to set activity for those met those urls where there is a id attached you don't want to set activity for activities you index url because here all the activities are required and not just a specific activity all right, so the next thing is new. That's another get request, which goes to slash activities slash new. So if we were to go to slash activities slash new, it shows up this nice form and that's calling at activity is equal to activity dot new. The next is edit. Now this is again very similar to show. 
and it renders the edit page. So if I were to do slash activity, that one, the first thing it will be set the it will do the before action and set the activity and then load that particular activity's data automatically. So the only difference between a new activity and editing an activity is that new is empty, edit fetches the data automatically. Next comes create. So create is a post method. Now you would if you recall, post methods are executed when you are creating some data on the model. So in this case also it says slash post slash activities. And the for it, the name of the method is called create. And when I so when I do add activities, it will activate new activity parameters. So this is very similar to what we saw for show. If I can just go back to the logs, new one. Uh, that is the so when we were creating new records, we would have called that one, right? Uh, right. So if you see, this says started post slash activities for at this particular time, and it says processing by activities controller create. So activities controller hash create, and parameters are this we can skip for now. And the activity is the name of our model, whose title is incident dance, activity type is dancing. So all of this is inside the parameters hash. And uh, it can process all those. So you would say, why is it calling activity params? Because activity params is defined over here. So again, there's some called automatic creation of all this. Uh, I'll come back to why we'll cover this why it says params dot require activity dot permit and all of this in the view session. But for now, just understand that activity params is setting what is known as uh, like what what exactly are these parameters that it has to look for. It's essentially just uh, these parameters that I'm showing you. These right. So once it's, it's it has this add activity variable as the new activity whose parameters are activity params, it responds in a specific format. So if there are no errors, if at activity.save, that is if there are no errors, if the save executes successfully, if at activity can be saved successfully, it can render in two formats. So it can either be HTML or JSON or even uh, a JS for that matter. But for now, let's stick to HTML. It says that if it's saving, render as HTML. And redirect to activity URL at the rate activity with the notice of activity was successfully created. So, what happened if you remember when I uh, let's, let's try to do this? Uh, let's go back to activities. Let's see what's happening when I create a new activity. So, now when you, if I just go fully down in the console, it says started get activities new. So it goes to it, it 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 goes to this particular method, this one, right? And now let's create another activity. Let's say new activity. Activity type is jogging, and uh, everything is today and duration is twenty five minutes. The calorie is one hundred. So if you now go back to the console. It says started post slash activities whose title is new activity active type is jogging etc. And then it executes the SQL command. It inserts it into our database, commits the transaction, and then redirects us. So if you go back to this, this was this this part was successful, and that's why it was inserted inside the database. And if that was successful. It is it's supposed to redirect us to the activity URL of add activity. Add activity is basically this activity, and that basically goes to this URL, which is that activity search. It goes to the show page of the new uh, activity that we created. And this nice notice that you see at the top, activity successfully created, is mentioned over here. So if you were to change the notice to like act activity or successfully created for Ray, it will now show that next time to create the activity. All right, that, that's it for create and update also works similarly. The only difference over here is that add activity is already set up uh, using this set activity because we have already called set activity on update. So it knows what activity it has to go to. 
so if it updates add activity with activity parameters so if i were to edit this activity it now went to slash edit and if i make it 1000 and update if i go back to the console it is now going to processing the activities controller slash update where the new parameters are all the parameters but one thing is changed which is the calories so it will now call an update query on sql last time it was a create query like an insert query this time it's a update query and then again here also it says redirect to add activity activity was successfully updated so it goes to the show page again slash activity slash three and the this thing is activity was successfully updated all right um i think i've covered everything um i hope the uh, redirection part is clear you're saying that once it's a successful update a redirect to activity url so that's also you know taken care of here completed 302 302 is the http code for redirect just like it is like 200 is for success 302 means redirect um what else is left let's go back to the controller then there is also destroy similarly it knows what activity and then it just destroys it and it goes to redirect to activity url so what happens is if i if i click on destroy and go back to the console it will now say processing by activities controllers has destroyed and it it executes a delete query once it's done it was redirect to the activities url which is basically the normal url the index url with the notice of activity was successfully destroyed activity was successfully destroyed very similar things happening and then uh we get the page that is it i think i've covered everything private methods were already discussed um so that's that's it about the controller a lot of magic happens under the hood uh automatically um let's look at the routing part once so if you saw a lot of times the routes were happening and uh, i said that how does rails know which route to map to so if i did activities one it will not understand this oh another cool thing which is there in rails is this nice page so if you uh, write some uh, wrong url it will give that no route matches for activities slash one but it also gives you all the routes that exist in your application so now if you see activities path is what we were calling inside the controller and it defines that it's a get request of the for of of the path slash activities and it goes to the controller action at activities index so if you want to know all the uh, routes of a particular rails application you can just type any wrong url and it will give you this and then you can debug what's going wrong etc so uh, all the all the all the helper met, all the routes are defined here helper basically means how are we referencing this inside the controller so if you if you remember we called it activities path over here and where is that activity path or you can also call it activities url that's the same um yeah that's that's nice um but what was that okay yeah, i'll talk about routes so if i go to routes.rb it says rails.application.routes.draw.2 this is just the rails format of how it's done it says resources activity now instead of calling it like uh you know uh specifying everything one by one rails has this thing like all the routes just just draw all the routes for the resource named as activity so instead of writing like instead of writing like you know get uh, something and map it to some controller you can just write resource activity and it works but in case you want to have uh, a specific new route so if you if suppose you want to say get slash tag okay it should go to which controller so you would specify that it needs to go to the activities controller and which method the stack method let's say so you obviously have to also define that method over here so let's say we create a new method called that stack and so now let's not do anything okay so if we were to go to slash stats that activity slash stack 
okay okay my bad i put a full stop over here this needs to be a comma let's see if that works looks like i have another mistake it needs to be a semicolon a colon my bad couldn't find activity with id equals stats quickly debugging what the mistake was i had a typo over here so if it was supposed to be activities or not let me know the wrong spelling and it needs to go to slash chat so now if you go to uh slash chat it says uh, no template font because we don't we haven't created a template but if we were to do it will work so basically our request is working but there's no view file that's why it gives that error so just to simplify it says it's a get request which needs to go to slash stats which needs to map to the controller of activities and the controller action called stats so this is how uh, you know we will do that uh, another thing which is already given by this uh, over here is that what's the root of your application so you can define the root of your application so if you were to create this uh, you know if you were to uncomment this and our case it's called activity stats index so it says it defines the root path to uh, which means that if i just do this okay until now it was showing you that rails flow if you want to slash but since our application is about activities it would be nice if i have shown all the activities as soon as i go to slash instead of having to deliberately type slash activity so if i just do this now it gives me all the activities right so it's my root url now all right um that's that's for that let's see let's look at my notes if i let some if i let something so we've talked about routing we've talked about generating the right another thing that you can do is instead of scaffolding the entire thing you can also generate the controller specifically so if i were to stop this over instead of saying like rails generate scaffold and you know all the attributes again again you can also say rails generate controller so that you only generate the controller the new controller if you want in without scaffolding anything it will be like a plain controller um uh, i think that's 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 for it and then you will follow the similar convention of you know calling the controller name and then some action and some options etc uh, another cool thing is that they don't have to be associated to a specific model they can just be a standalone controller as well like so if you it will you just name it as you know i don't know calories or something and it's not a model on its own but it will create the controller uh, one another thing is that and right now what we did if you recall was that go back we did rails generate scaffold and then we typed the name of the model and everything else but when we saw in week three we had already created the model so what if you want to create the controller and all the other files without having to uh, recreate the model you can simply do rails generate as scaffold activity and that will work so if uh if you did that in week three that will generate all the other files except the model that also works uh, we had enough to look at generate if you want to delete the scaffold there's also destroy so you could do rails destroy and the name of the scaffold it will delete all the files that you have created right now if you do rails destroy activity everything will get deleted uh, as far as the scaffold is concerned but before doing rails destroy make sure that you do rails db roll back because you have already migrated that change and you would now like to roll back that change um that is it uh, all the information is al also written in the new article that we have created so if you just go back to the bootcamp slash week four you will find this uh, thing and if you reach out to if you head over to controllers all of which what i've discussed now is mentioned over here as well so you can follow this um that's it uh, then 
there's the assignment one that you can complete and then run the tests to see if it's passing. In the next, uh, we'll also have another video on authentication. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In that, we'll uh, you know secure our application and have sign in, sign out, etc. functionality, which you would have seen in most of our applications. Um, that's it. Um, thank you so much. Do follow the uh, resources that you provided and submit your assignments. Um, yes. Thank you. Goodbye.